This morning's Mass is offered for the soul of Ruth Guercio. We offer the Mass for Saturday in the sixth week of Easter. O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray, O God, whose Son at His ascension to the heavens was pleased to promise the Holy Spirit to the Apostles. Grant, we pray that just as they receive manifold gifts of heavenly teaching, so on us too you may bestow spiritual gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After spending some time at Antioch, Paul departed, went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. He spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. When he wished to cross over to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, Paul greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is King of all the earth. God is King of all the earth. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great King over all the earth. God is King of all the earth. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praise with the song. God is King over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. God is King of all the earth. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, he is highly exalted. God is King of all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, I went from the Father and came into the world, and now I leave the world to return to the Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, Very truly I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be complete. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day, you will ask in my name. I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world again. I am leaving the world and am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our country of Canada and many other places, we have moved the ascension to tomorrow, to the Sunday that uh, follows Ascension Thursday, because we remember Ascension Thursday is always on the 40th day um, after the resurrection. So today we are finding ourselves on the vigil of the Ascension, this magnificent uh, event where Jesus returns to the Father, where he returns in great triumph and with a great uh, appreciation from the Father for the job that is well done with his mission on earth. We hear this uh, today in these final words in the John chapter 16. We are in this last discourse still. We hear him say, I came from the Father have come into the world, again I am leaving the world, and I'm going to the Father. So the one who descends is the one who ascends, who goes back to the Father, taking our humanity, taking our frail human nature beyond the veil, to use the language of the letter of the Hebrews. No one has ever come into the presence of the Father with a human nature uh, before. So it is a great moment, the Ascension. One of the great consolations, of course, in the Ascension, because the physical Jesus is absent as his physical body returns to the Father, is the consolation of the Church. We are all feeling that so much in this COVID time we feel the absence of the church because the church, she has to be kind of underground, praying in a quieter way as we're not fully allowed to have our services. And tomorrow it is the opening up of churches here in our archdiocese in a limited way. So we sense what gives us great consolation is one another is the uh, presence of one another who are those who are fellow believers. We seek sympathy. We seek someone who will understand our common pilgrimage. This is why we need the help of one another. Someone who has journeyed with us, understands the path that we have walked. In whatever way of life we are in, we all need support. In the life of St. Paul, this is one of the most powerful lessons. He needed friends. He needed co-workers. And we see, we are now hearing today about the beginning of the third missionary journey. What did he do? But he developed friendships that were spirit-based friendships where he had shared the message of the risen Christ, and he would then leave those friends to look after a particular church. 
And here we are thinking of the trip that St. Paul makes in the journey of the end of the second missionary journey, going from Cancre, this port uh, of Corinth, to Asia Minor. We can imagine what a circuitous route, what a topsy-turvy route through all those different islands going across the Aegean over to what is now modern-day Turkey. It was Asia Minor, a Greek-speaking colony um, controlled by the Romans. So he sets up, of course, the church in Ephesus with his two friends, Priscilla and Aquila. This shows he had great trust in them. They were all three of them tent makers. But then another character arrives in the scene, a man named Apollos. He is one of the stars in the book of the Acts. We will meet him also in the letter to the Corinthians. Strangely, he had only received John's baptism. He had to receive the baptism of Christ, what we call the sacrament of baptism. But he was a star, a very eloquent preacher, very gifted mind, as we hear St. Luke describe, he knew the scriptures very well. And coming from Alexandria, what does that mean? It meant that he was from the large Jewish community, and they had magnificent synagogues, and they had great learning and instruction in that city. So this is a well-educated and well-formed man who will become really the Apostle to Corinth. He will be sent, even in our reading today, we're hearing, he meets up with Priscilla and Aquila, they form him and prepare him, and he is sent to Corinth to be the main teacher and evangelizer there. Once again, we see a beautiful story of friendship that the Gospel gives us friends. Jesus is reminding us of the bond of friendship with the disciples and ourselves when he says that now you will be able to pray in my name. He's thinking of that time when he will ascend to the Father and send the Holy Spirit. And we will have an intimacy with God that we did not have before the ascension. So we notice in this drama of the last discourse that the disciples are still kind of mixed up about different, different aspects of Christ's life and his return to the Father. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of things to be sorted out. But he says, ask and you will receive so that your joy may be complete. He gives us now the power to ask in his name, which means with the full power of God, when a petition is brought to God in our Lord's name, and when we are disciples, we have a great confidence as we pray to the Father. The end of Mass today, we will be once again saying the Novena prayers to the pent to the for the arrival of the Holy Spirit in our heart, the Pentecost Novena. We will be bringing to that prayer our own family prayers, so many situations of need, of fear, of worry, of health, concerns, etc. So we will pray with confidence knowing that what we ask in his name will give glory to God and will give joy to us, just by the asking. Let us offer our prayers to the Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you today to look into our hearts to hear our prayers. We pray in thanksgiving for the gift of friendship with which God sustains us, especially in this time of the COVID virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the growth of the Church throughout the earth, that she may penetrate those societies and cultures that are very opposed to her. Communist China, the Middle East, Nigeria, 
different Muslim countries, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick amongst our loved ones, our family members, our fellow parishioners, all those in hospital, all those who are dealing with the virus in our province of BC. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Once again, we pray for the nurses and the doctors and the medical personnel and the first responders and firefighters, etc., those most exposed to this virus and for their protection and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the grace to ascend with Jesus and to pray in confidence since he is at the right hand of the Father, bringing our needs to the Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, look upon us and hear the prayers we have offered through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, and God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise, glory of his name for our good, and the good of all his holy church. Constantly shape our minds, we pray, O Lord, by the practice of good works, that trying always for what is better, we may strive to hold ever fast to the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times. So I thank you.
our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered uh, willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, I wish that where I am, those you gave me may also be with me, that they may see the glory that you gave me. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Day 2 of the Pentecost Novena O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I am sincerely sorry for all the sins, faults, infidelities, and omissions of my life because they have offended thee, my only benefactor and sovereign good. I firmly resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to sin no more. Amen. O God, who resists the proud and bestow thy grace on the humble, grant us the virtue of true humility, of which your only begotten Son showed to the faithful an example of himself that we may never provoke thee to anger by our pride, but rather receive, through humility, the gift of your grace, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O Holy Spirit, make me faithful in every thought, and grant that I may always listen to your voice. Watch for your light and follow your gracious inspirations. I cling to you and give myself to you and ask you by your compassion to watch over me in my weakness, holding the pierced feet of Jesus, looking at his five wounds, trusting in his precious blood, adoring his open side and stricken heart. I implore you, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, to keep me in your grace now and always, Grant us the favor we ask in this novena. Amen. Divine Spirit of light and love, I consecrate my mind and heart and will to you for time and for eternity. May my mind be open to your divine inspirations, to the teachings of the Church whose infallible guide you are. 
May my heart be filled with love of God, and of my neighbor, and my will conform to the will of God. May my whole life be a faithful imitation, the life and virtues of Christ, our Lord, to whom with the Father and you be honor and glory forever. Amen. Tomorrow morning we will have the Mass at 8 a.m. here in the St. Gerard's Church. The live streaming will happen from this church because we have a better sound uh, reverberation here. And there will be confessions today from 11 to 12, and the confessions today will now be heard in the church. We have a COVID-19 confessional beside the Sacred Heart statue, so go up to the front of the church for your confessions today from 11 to 12. We also have the Holy Hour today, it will be our last one, since we are going back to the normal schedule. 8 o'clock Mass in the weekday mornings, etc. And so today, Father Prashant has the last holy hour.